The entrepreneurs among you are probably afraid you'll miss your chance and something will slow you down. Your students worry that college might do the same thing. For most of us, university is a very useful means to an end. But if you've already figured out the end, I guess you don't have to go. Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg were in so much of a hurry, they didn't even bother to graduate from their universities. So there's no point in my suggesting what you already know, that li you're living in an age of acceleration, a point in history where everything is speeding up. You all feel an imperative to be nimble just to keep up in case you miss your main chance. It just took 35 years for one quarter of the US population to have a telephone and a radio. Between 1947 and 1955, eight years, 50% of the US population acquired a television. More recently, it took six years for 25% of us to have a PC and just 30 months to have a mobile phone. The internet took less than a year to do the same thing. So we're living with the consequences of what we, of technology without necessarily knowing that something good or bad is going to happen. I mean, if you think about Concord, we all thought we'd fly faster and faster, and there were limits. And there are limits on technology, but we don't really know what they are. Maybe we do need drones flying across the sky and white vans coming to our door in the dead of night. Maybe we don't. Maybe we'll react against it. But the options are, are endless. And that gives opportunity for young people to, to be part of that transformation. When I first worked at CBS, no one left. No one died and no one wanted to leave because there was nowhere better to be. But when I returned to the company from Vietnam, I had three jobs in 10 years. And in each case, I left them because those jobs no longer existed, outpaced by cultural and technological change. Traditional networks began to fragment and audiences were diminishing as they are here. The golden years were fading as new competition and new technology began to, quote, disintermediate traditional businesses. Every senior executive in business today, probably every headmaster, has to wonder what needs to be preserved at all costs and what needs to evolve or be changed or risk redundancy. I've really tried to, to explain that the, the, the pace of technology, which is accelerating, is both an opportunity and a problem. It's a problem because everything is changing so quickly that nothing seems to last. I use the word disintermediated. Your existing business is disrupted and changed even while you're getting to know it. So it's an unsettling time. If you were born 20, 30 years ago, you thought television would last forever. Network television, BBC, standard television, that was, seemed good enough. And then you had cable, and then you have satellite, and now you have streaming, and so forth. So you, everybody has to adjust to the rapid pace of change. So faced by acceleration in the velocity of the world, what can we do? Adapt and die is all very well, but do I have any more practical advice? Or do all your adolescents simply wait for the inevitable obsolescence? Well, first of all, we should not let the perfect be the enemy of the upgradable good. The race to market and the speed of innovation is so fast that getting a product, getting an idea out there today may matter more than the perfection. We need to be able to take risks and accept that some of them will not pay off. And we have to be willing to simply correct our mistakes all the time. Apple with their iOS app platform and now Google with their Android open platform have the right idea, curating a space where others can create and interact. It's a better model for success than closed systems. You own the area in which others innovate. You become the framework within which others can change. The opportunities for, for people who adapt to this change and who are not afraid of it um, is endless. And, and, and age is no longer a barrier. I mean, most of us who are adults feel that our children can talk down to us now. They're understanding almost Im immediately of what technology can do for them um, is faster than, than we ever imagined. And, and so it gives them the opportunity to create jobs, create opportunities for themselves that wouldn't have been possible. All my life I've sought change, or perhaps it's sought me. But whichever us in this room set off in search of the other, I have been constantly presented with a new opportunity to upend myself and everything in which I thought I trusted.
And that's my advice to you. All the more valuable is the world in which you find yourself is moving faster towards we know not what. You will, if you are to survive and thrive over decades, be required to stand many times on your head. I commend it to you. I think the only way to make sense of a world turned upside down is to stand on your head. And after I've left the room, why don't you try it? Thank you. When I was a student, you didn't think of starting your own company. You didn't think of starting your own business. You didn't even think of going into business a lot of times. Now you've got children who can build companies, can, can build options, can create programming, can create media, and can find things that would, would have been impossible 25 years ago. And so, so how you harness that talent and how you harness those opportunities is the challenge of education today. Um, and while it's exciting, it's also occasionally unnerving.